Hey guys, so no Billy today. What do you mean? I'm right here. Oh shit, dude. But I just went to get food. That's it. I just need more nice. food. How you been doing? I'm doing okay. How about you? It's cool. Nice. That's cool. Okay. Keeping it real. Billy and I were gonna record a little thing. A little, little thing. Billy, Billy fucking died. So that was sick, you know. I watched him die in my arms. That was neat. I like that. I enjoyed that. Um, so, I don't know, I thought I'd, thought I'd, uh, talk, talk about all, uh, to, 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 to talk about myself, about, um, about what I liked, what I didn't like, what was boring. But basically, I wrote down all, everything that sticks out to me, and, I don't know, there's particulars that were good, and particulars that were just whatever. Uh, mostly games. I'll start out with, like, the, the fucking Xbox. Metro Exodus. I have never played the original, but this looks pretty cool. Um... I don't know. It just looks spooky, and it looks it looks like it looks the most Bioshockian of all of the shooters shown during Microsoft's press conference, and I'm into that. I've been always way more into linear, story focused. Maybe not story focused, but just kind of fun, like Doom and Bioshock and that kind of thing. Wolfenstein, um, just because I don't know. It's, it's more focused and fun. Uh, so that game, that game was a highlight, as, as I'm sure it was for a lot of people, since apparently Metro hasn't been made for a while. Um, then there was uh, ooh, uh, the the Lord of the Rings game, Shadow of War. The, the gameplay didn't particularly stick out to me, but like the writing itself was funny. Like the the fucking part where it's like yeah, it fucking pop off his head and there's a little like a little pop noise. Like I like that. Um, I like the part where he uh, he comes out of like being bad and he's like ah dark lord white lord what's the difference it was a really good racial statement on the on the developer's part i really appreciated that um super lucky's tale i i thought that looked you know pretty cool you know 3d platform at microsoft's press conference neat um but apparently it's also a vr game that kind of dampened it a little bit i mean like it's a remake or port of a um of a vr game that's neat and all that's cool for people who don't have the vr uh, I don't know, Just it just makes it feel a little cheaper. It also looked a little cheap. It looked like different like cutouts of different games kind of thrown... I don't mean like particularly different games or specific different games. Just they didn't... The, the characters nor the environments nor the collectibles really mesh that well for me. It was cool to see Microsoft supporting the 3D platform genre, but like other than that, I, I fucking whatever. It looked kind of fun. I was disappointed it wasn't Conquer because I showed it and then... They, like, had a little tail come up that looked like Conker's tail, and I was like, oh, oh, shit. And then it wasn't, and, you know, that's neat. Um, then, you know, they ended the show off with Anthem. That was neat. That game looks pretty fun. I know EA showed it, but, um, I mean, obviously it was more memorable at Xboxes because they actually showed it, you know. EA showed nothing. They showed, this exists. And then they showed Xbox. Xbox showed it and it was like, nice. Um, Xbox actually showed you flying around. It looked really seamless and, and polished and fun. Um, I mean, I'm way into that. It looks, that looks cool. Um, Ori and the Blind Forest 2. Neat. Neat, neat a Rooney. I, I'm down for that. I didn't play the first one. Don't have an Xbox One. Um, but it looked like a good time. Just hopping, flopping around. I, I really like the art style as, mu as much do. I think the story is pretty, pretty quality. Um, it looks like a, a, a polished, cool, fun game to play. Uh, I really like the atmosphere. Might have to get a, a, a look see if I can ever get like a Windows 10 computer functioning well enough to play anything more than like an Atari game. Can't even play Crash Bandicoot. Can't even play Undertale on my shitty fucking rock. Uh, but looking forward to that. Um, on that on that note, I don't like I don't have an Xbox One. The reason I would be forced to buy, either get a computer is because I don't know the, the, this. This show didn't convince me to buy an Xbox One. I'll, I'll get I'll get I'll get some more of that later when I get go move on to the conferences in general. Um, I skipped EA on accident because EA is fucking blue. But um, way out or a way out was cool. Like I really like the concept of a uh, split sc split screen multiplayer actually being like in and of itself a mechanic. Like um, one character one player is actually doing something. Um, while the one's in a cutscene or something like that, and it's expanding the story. 
I think that's that's a really novel, cool idea, and I think um, I think that uh, more developers could gain from that. Um, uh, I'm wondering if that could get frustrating for the player. It gets like a, at the short end of the stick, and like they don't like cutscenes, and they're like, "Ugh, you get to like play. Like, why can't I just be playing in my cutscene or something?" Um, but I don't know. I don't, I don't know enough yet to know if that's gonna be a problem. That's just something that could happen, I guess. It looks it looks like a fun game to sit. I really like that they're supporting local co-op. I think that's awesome that they not only thought of that, but that they are um, like being specific about that. Like this is what you need to do. Um, you can play online, but they're 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 specifying that this is how you want to do it. Looks fun. Um, and that was it for EA. I don't know. I was snoozing the whole time. I watched it while I was crapping and the poop was probably the best part of the whole conference when that was a real raunchy poop I, honestly I'm, I'm, I'm about to speak more about my poop than about ea ea's press conference because it was so dull um that was my least favorite no just spoilers for the end of this video but that was my least favorite and then sony uh no wait ubisoft was next yeah ubisoft was next uh they started off with mario rabbits like holy shit this is this this is a game like this is a, this is a thing that isn't fake how is that possible? How, how is Mario Rabbids a thing that exists? Um, I saw, like, the leaks. I kind of believed it. It seemed, like, too specific to not be real, but also too stupid to be real. Like, I don't like Rabbids. I don't I don't think a lot of people above the age of 10 do. Um, and that's fine if you do. Like, that, it's, it's, that, it's that primal urge to watch something be loud and spastically run around. Like, if I turn my brain off, I can wholeheartedly enjoy them, but... Other than that, I just thought they're not charming. They didn't have a good design. Like I, I, I greatly prefer the minions design over them, but the minions still look like shit. Like they have gross just, pff, hair. Anyway, but Mario Rabbids looks really polished and really fun. Like it looks, as a lot of people have pointed out, XCOM for kids, and I'm that, that, that's cool. I'm, that, it looks. I'm 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 a bit of a, an idiot. So like games like that that are over, like really complicated and make you. Um, choose your path and like everything and your skill trees and all that stuff i'll just i just get get way overwhelmed and i can't handle it and that game looks like it's up my alley in that like just really simple skill trees like this each particular character has one thing going to a next thing that's it that, that's all it is nothing more complicated than that and I, I like that like mario and luigi and paper mario are my favorite rpg series specifically because they're fucking for big old stupid dummies and that's I'm, I'm, that's cool um um, yeah, it looks, it looks interesting. I, I really like that Ubisoft was able to put more character into the Mario characters than Nintendo was. Like, Peach was doing shit, like, her personality trait is that she's specifically going against the damsel and the stressed archetype, which is cool, you know, I, I dig that. It, it is, it is weirdly contrasted with the fact that she is the damsel in distress with the actual Mario game coming out this year, but whatever, you know, I'll, I'll just ignore that. Um... But yeah, I like, I don't know, I don't know how I feel about the interactions with the Rabbids and the Mario characters, it looks alright, doesn't look that great, but like, I don't, I, I have to see more to see how well they fit in together, it kind of, it almost, it, it's a loose, like, comparison, but it feels a little bit to me like the Simpsons Family Guy crossover, where like, the Family Guy characters were way, like, more, like, disgustingly vulgar than the Simpsons characters, which were, which were comparatively innocent. This is, like, obviously way toned down compared to that, but, like, the rabbits are more off the wall and, like, potty humor, while Mario has always been very, like, I fell on my head and it hurt and it's funny. Um, so, I get that. It's cool. I, I, I want to see Rabbit Peach get, like, thrown off a skyscraper, but other than that, I like, I like uh, Rabbit Luigi. That's cute. I don't really haven't seen the personality traits of any other ones, but I like Rabbit Luigi. He's he's a little little sweetheart, a little good boy. I'm down with that. Um, the cool part, another cool part about that uh, part of the conference, the Rabbit Mario co uh, part, was I loved it when um, Shigeru Miyamoto came up, and then uh, the guy I forgot his name, but the guy that was up on the on the stage pointed to the director of Mario and Mario and Rabbids, and uh, oh oh god. <clears throat> oh. Oh. and uh the, the guy was like tearing up his face was all red it was, it was super super inspiring great to see i like that was fantastic that was a 
and, and you could tell that like the camera guy was like hell yeah milk the shit because he kept the camera on the guy for so long and you could tell the guy knew that the camera was on him and he was like god damn it why'd you do this to me um but it was it was it was that that part was great that was that was a standout moment of this e3 and then uh fuck all the middle shit i did not care i was snoozing but then they had Beyond Good and Evil, and great, fucking, I never played the first one, I, I want to, I plan on it, uh, it's not super, I don't know how cheap it is to find, but I remember the last time I looked it wasn't very cheap, I think it was around the 60 range, which isn't too bad, but like, I just didn't feel like forking over the money, um, but I want to play the first one now, now that the second one's coming out, and from what I've heard is drastically different, and what I imagine it being is that the first one was, is probably like pretty M rated, but like, not cuss heavy, so I don't know how I, I personally would feel about this this release of the second one being crazy, like, yeah, you're fucking Swiss chocolate, mate. That that, that's, that would probably make me uncomfortable. Other than, like, otherwise, since I'm not a fan of the original, like, I, I haven't played it, I was, it was a cool trailer. It was an awesome trailer. I liked the characters. Uh, I liked the atmosphere. I liked the, the themes. There was, even even though I haven't played the original, I do, I do think that they were using, you know, fuck as, like, a, as a, as a, as a crutch, as a crutch to keep the, the humor and the atmosphere moving. I mean, who am I to talk, but, like, I'm not a fucking... I don't make a shit ton of money developing games. But it looks cool. I, I'm down. I'm, I'm gonna try to play the first one on my GameCube before it comes out. Before the second one comes out. Um, but, yeah, it looks cool. I, I think a lot of people uh, are excited because of it, and I'm excited for them. All right, uh, next was Sony. Yes. I hope that's not what I'm forgetting. If it, if, oh, 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 Bethesda, oh boy, there was, that's why I forgot him, I didn't write any games that I was excited for, okay, I'll get to that in a little bit, um, Tony, uh, first they show Uncharted, that's cool, uh, I don't know, at this point, I feel like I'm getting a little tired of the climby, climby, boring shooting, uh, story segments that Uncharted is, that's, it's, it's great for Uncharted fans. It's cool that, that, that 4 wasn't the end of the series. Um, no, I mean, no spoilers, but that obvious that felt like a conclusion. I mean, by the name, you should know. Um, I like Nadine a lot. I think she's an, like it was a really cool character in 4, and I like her in this too, how she still like she still remains as like the stuck-up, um, kind of rule-abider a little bit. Um, but I don't, I'm not crazy about Chloe, I haven't been since the beginning, she always felt like just the eye candy character, so it feels, like, even more weird now that they're trying to shove her out of that archetype, but she's cool, I guess, um, yeah, I think the story is probably gonna be the best part, just, just, just like any other Uncharted game, I guess, um, it looks gorgeous, obviously, it's still, it's still running on the, on Forza engine, it's cool to see Chloe running on Forza engine, that's neat. Um, they, they do seem to have a cool dynamic where, like, they're actually trying to, like, seem like they're at each other's throats the entire time, unlike other Uncharted games where Nate's usually, you know, dick and butt with all the other, with all the other characters around. Or the ones that he's climbing with, like, his brother and Sully and all that shit. Um, yeah, so it's cool to see this dynamic where they're just, like, don't, don't, they're, they're begrudgingly working with one another. I don't know why, but that's cool. I'm gonna keep that on my radar i'm not sure if i'll buy it i most likely will since i bought all the other four just like pretty much just out of either habit or like fandom i'll buy the the this one what's it called lost legacy i think um and then shadow of the colossus h fucking d who saw that coming after how long i don't i'm not sure if it's team Ico developing it i would assume but i've oftentimes i've noticed that hd remakes are developed by other people um but who would have guessed that after it took them so long to develop Last Guardian, that they would already be making an HD remake. And showing trailers for an HD remake of Shadow of the Colossus. And it looks great. It looks fantastic. I cannot wait for that. That's going to be a, a good old time. Because that's that, of all the Team Ico games, that's the game I played the least. And it is, like, undoubtedly the best. So, uh, I don't know. I, I, I can't wait to return to it with upgraded gra graphics. Unfortunately, I'm horrified of, like, underwater creatures. So... Someone's gonna have to beat, like, the, like, actually, I've never beaten the fourth Colossus, I think it's the fourth Colossus, the Underwater Serpent, I've never beaten that one by myself, someone is actually going to have to take the controller for me and beat it, maybe, maybe Billy and I will play it on the show, that'd be cool, um, and then Detroit Become Human, this was a little bit of a heartbreaker for me, I was really stoked for 
Um, I was really stoked for it after seeing the first trailer with the, de de the detective who had a lot on the line. He he was he seemed like a really cool character, as in like he was like down to earth, but he knew he was like a cyborg, so he obviously couldn't like. He he was following the rules, but it was wasn't it seemed like rules that weren't told to him, but they was that weren't stalled onto him. That's a, a pretty cool concept that I, it isn't that unique, but it's it's cool nonetheless. But in this trailer, it was like anarchists, and that is a much less interesting character than like a detective that has to follow the rules. It's just I don't know. That's that's for me personally, that's less personable than than a detective who uh, needs to do his job and like. It's it's neat, but I, I saw this trailer and I was like, man, like I, I was let down. I was upset, but it's Quantum Dream, and and stereotypically in all their games, you're able to play as, or typically you're able to play as other characters, um, other than the main characters. So ho so what I'm thinking is that that detective is most likely the main character. This anarchist is one of the like probably two or three side characters that you switch onto a lot of the time, um, and if so, that's cool. You know that'll probably. It, 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 it looks like it'll work a lot better as like a side story that blends in with the main story. I'm down with that, I guess. But other, they didn't show that. They didn't show that it was that. So I'm, I'm only assuming. If that's the case, that's cool. If not, I don't know. I might not pick up this game anymore. It just, it, the tone isn't working for me as it stands. Um, and then God of War. God of War looks cool. I'm down. I haven't played, um, I haven't played, I beat one. I have not beaten two or three. Um, I liked one a lot. It was it was it was a good time. There's a lot of hack and slash at, at some of its finest. I've heard two and three are great also. Um, not Ascension. I have I have never heard anything good about that. But may, I might try that. Um, uh, oh shit! But uh, I don't know. Uh, this this looks cool. Looks like a change of tone. I've seen some people upset uh, at like at the. Uh, the change in character of Kratos. And I get that. I get that um, all the God of War is supposed to be mindless, like, God-destroying hack-and-slash games. Like, literally God-destroying. Um, that makes sense. I, mean, I I totally get why they're upset. But me, personally, I saw this, and I'm like, alright, this is this is an interesting direction. I'm, I'm down. I, I, I want to play this and just kind of see where it goes. Hopefully, I won't have had to play the second or third one, because with all the like amazing games coming out this year and the beginning of next year... I just don't think I'll have time. But if not, I will definitely check out 4. And it, the gameplay looks fun too, like the axe and calling it to you. Um, it seems a lot more down to earth, which is, you know, take it or leave it. What It's as cool as, it's it's debatably as cool as being as insane as the other games, like whatever. Um, but yeah, it looks cool. I'll keep my eye on it. And then Days Gone. That This is a game that didn't really appeal to me too much uh, last E3. It looked cool. I like the the, the 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 hordes of zombies looked like very well produced, but that gameplay also looked really really cutscene e as in scripted, um, and not not as in it'll be like that in the finished game, but as in they showed a trailer set up with gameplay and it wasn't, or it was half gameplay. Um, but I wasn't interested last year. This year, however, it looks a little a little, little more interesting. I, I I'm starting to roll around to it. Like he starts out in a camp and like. Some guy comes and he's like, our, our, our friend is missing. And the guy is like, oh, shit. And then gets on his bike and then starts riding his bike and then goes to, uh, starts to, like, follow, like, trails to where his friend is. I'm not sure if they confirmed that this was open world, but that, that seems to be the case, especially with this trailer. Because as soon as he left the, the town, like, a nice circular mini map formed in the corner, looked very open world y. Um, so that's cool. I'm, 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 I'm excited for an open world zombie game that isn't uh, Dead Island. Is that what it's called? Because that's you know that was just boring and not cool. Um, I didn't enjoy it anyway. Uh, but this looks cool. I, I like how the zombies like interact with each other. How they kind of fight with each other. That that's that's comparatively unique to how zombies are usually shown as just drones that don't uh, acknowledge each other usually. Um, and then he, and then there's a the part where he gets. I've seen a lot of people mentioning he puts the bomb on the door and lets all the zombies attack. That was cool. That, th but again, this this also felt relatively scripted. I would really, I really need to see some like live gameplay. I don't know if they've streamed it yet, but I have not seen any. Um, to be to be convinced that this is gonna be it's gonna be this in depth and this cohesive. Uh, but it looks it looks cool. I'm down. Also, just like with Metro Ex Exodus, they showed a zombie bear. 
and that is re- I, I'm all fucking for that like that's so cool I and it shouldn't be cool that's the thing like so many other zombie properties should have taken advantage of advantage of zombie animals I don't I, I hate watching a zombie movie and there's just like a regular dog or a regular bird or something like these sh- I, I mean I get if it you can like make it canon as a human only disease but why why make it that boring why not have zombie freaking crows and cows and stuff like that's cool and I'm really glad I really hope they expand on that more because that's something that I've always wanted to see um, and the zombie bear in Days Gone looks really cool and in Metro Exodus well, I don't even I don't know what the story of that is but it looks like a mole bear I guess but that's still cool uh, that's that, that's horrifying that, that, that is a, a terrifying idea and then to end off Sony it didn't end off the ca- press conference so I want to save it for last Monster Hunter World so man it's, I'm so split oh my kitty cat got on the table right, Monster Hunter World's engine looks incredible it looks out of this freaking world I knew it was Monster Hunter from the beginning because of the weapon the, the guy's movements as soon as you're walking I was texting my friend and saying bro this is Monster Hunter and he was like fuck because he, he, he doesn't own a PS4 um, and now he's gonna have to buy one to play this because it looks it looks great. It's Monster Hunter Five. There's no there's no getting around it. It's not World. It's Five. They even said that that's the, the only reason they didn't put Five was for like localization issues. Um, but it looks it does look cool. The, the the monsters look. It's a really cool realistic take on the monsters that are usually cartoony, mostly because the systems limitations like the 3ds's and the Wii U's limitations, and the you know PS2. Um. But I, it, it upsets me. It, it makes me a little salty that it's it's not on Nintendo consoles, and I totally get why it's not. It, the PS4 is the only system that can handle this. Other, you know, between Nintendo and them, I get that. That makes complete sense. But I don't know. It, it hurts to me that I'm just now hearing that uh, that Capcom is not gonna have has no plans announced for for localizing Monster Hunter X Double Cross for. The Switch, and that, and so, at the same time as a new at Monster Hunter Five getting announced as a Sony exclusive, we're it is being announced that here in America we're not getting one for the Switch at least yet, and that really was like, God, that sucks. Like I have to abandon my awesome home slash portable that is perfect for Monster Hunter for this console one, and it's still cool. Like it's great, and I, and it, the engine looks amazing, and I can't wait to be playing with my friends. But I don't know. It's it's just it just feels like betrayal, and I, and I get it. It's the gaming world, and, and they betrayed Sony first to go to Nintendo. Obviously, they go to whatever sells more. But I mean, the Switch is doing really well right now. So please localize it at least, please. At the same time, I am really happy that this came out as obviously being only able as obviously not being able to play it on the Switch. There was a rumor earlier that MH5 was only going to be. It was going to be a PS4 exclusive, and I got salty, like really salty, because I was like, if it, if this is just in the same engine that's on that's on Switch, and it's like like slightly upscaled, I'm gonna be upset because that means they were just doing they were doing exclusivity for exclusivity's sake, but they didn't. They they show they clearly proved that this game is can only be played on the PS4, not because just not just because it's a wall. It's because it it is. The PS4 can, is, can handle it. Like, it can handle no loading screens. It can handle a, a, like amazing engine and all the gameplay mechanics I'm sure they'll add. But, you know, I, I'll, I'll keep my eye on it. It looks great. I I hope I can play it with my friends. Um, but please, MHX, just give it to us. Dear God. And then finally, last but certainly not least, my big handsome men. My mustachioed fucking boys. Nintendo. They... They kept tweeting before this conference. It's like, it's going to be nothing. It's not going to be, you know, it's going to be the only 2017 holiday games. It's going to be short. That's what they kept saying. And I was like, yeah, yeah, just fucking get my hopes down so I can fucking go hang myself in the closet. And then it started, you know, it started with Reggie, like, being the deity that he is and fucking melting a house around him. And then, um, and then I went to Xenoblade Chronicles X first, which is an interesting choice. That's not, that's not a very hypey game to start with for mo like... I know it is for some. Stop it, cat. Stop it. I know Xenoblade Chronicle X is for is for some, but not me in particular, and not. I I would go on a limb and say that the majority of Switch owners aren't particularly looking forward extremely to that. They might be like, "Oh, that looks cool. I'll, I'll keep my eye on it," but they weren't like. It's not. You know, it wouldn't be Mario Kart or Zelda levels of hype of showing first, but it looks cool. Um. But the four I have four games, technically five games listed. Uh. They, I think they showed 
Kirby first, and that was an awesome surprise. Especially since they specifically stated that there was a 3DS multiplayer game coming out. And so we were like, alright, there's no Switch game coming out soon. And they showed one, and it looks great. It looks like four-player superstar. And and you can mix powers, which is an awesome callback to um, to Kirby 64, with Crystal Shards. Yeah. And that's great. I, I love that. I, and the engine looks great. It looks it looks like a really fun, amazing game. We'll see how it goes. I hope it's not too samey with Return to Dreamland, because that's how they've mainly been. Like, uh, Planet Robobot was great. I loved it. So was Triple Deluxe. But they all still they they both of them still felt a little samey to Return to Dreamland because the engine looks so similar. And this does too. I just I'm just hoping. I, I I have I have high hopes. And then there was Yoshi. It looks cool. It looks like a a, a fun Yoshi game. Wooly World was great, and I'm not sure if this is being developed by Goodfield, the people who developed that in Kirby's Epic Yarn, but I I would assume, because it looks, you know, <laughs> good feeling, but I'm not sure. It looks, I, I like the, the, the 3D to, to, the background to foreground, you know, you know foreplay, and throw and throwing your your eggs into both dimensions looks looks cool. Um, one thing that has me, has me a little nervous is the... Um, the aiming into the background looks really annoying and frustrating and slow to do. Like I, I, I was watching the stream of it and I, I couldn't stand watching it because it was, it just took it takes so long to aim in the background and then like select your target and, and throw the egg. Um, but I don't know. I, I'm, 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 I'm anxious to see more. I, Willow World didn't let me down. New Island friggin' blue. But if this is developing by Goodfeel, being developed by Goodfeel, um, cool. Like. I'm, I'm way interested to see more. And then there was, like, pretty much everybody's, like, to uh, in their top two highlights of this Direct, which was, like, you know, it, get, it goes into space, and it's like, holy shit, what is going to happen? And it was Metroid, and Metroid Prime 4. And the big four showed up, it was a nice little picture, and I was like, damn, that, that's crazy. And people obviously lost their shit. I had, like, I had my mouth gaping open. I was watching this at work, like, I had to sneak peeks at this i was pausing it i was like watching it live but um yeah and then and i was just like <gasps> i was flabbergasted at that part um that's crazy i i think uh, that's great i'm really happy they did that for metroid fans they had to a lot of people are like where's the gameplay and it's like i'm oh, i'm near positive that they started developing st started developing this game directly after the all the petitions for to bring down federation force started I, I'm positive they were like, all right, like, holy shit, that was backlash. If we do not have a sign of Metroid Prime 4 at our next E3, we are going to get ass raped. So they were like, here we go, and just started developing it. They're probably not even, like, close to being a quarter of the way done. So they were like, we we have to, sh if, we're going to get destroyed. If we don't show Metroid, if we don't announce Metroid Prime 4, we're going to get annihilated. So that's what they did. I think it was a really smart move on their part. Um... I'm more. I'm obviously more connected to Nintendo in the business ses, sense than with uh, compared to every other developer, so I would recognize that. I probably would be mad if like it was like Bioshock coming soon with Microsoft or Sony. I'd be like, yeah, are you fuck you guys? Um, but with but with Nintendo, I understand because just because I'm you know I'm a little fanboy. I see. I saw that and I was like, smart, smart move. Um, and then there was the second the the remake of Metroid Two. That's awesome that's so cool that like people really wanted metroid and they got it that was the thing i saw for most that and like animal crossing was metroid people wanted their metroid and they got it that's awesome i think that's great um it looks like a lot of fun too like i'm I, like i was sold like i want to pick this game up uh i think the thing that really sold me on it was a little like counter move like she swings her arm up and like bam, the back hits things away because my biggest problem with metroids is like metroid games is that when you shoot you just kind of like I don't know, things don't die quick enough, so they always I always, like, hit them first. So I think it's really cool that, like, you notice that you're not killing it fast enough, and you don't have to take the damage. You can just bat, and bat, bat it away and then keep shooting. I think that's great. And also the, the full aiming looks awesome. Like, it looks like a, a really good time. Um, Bomb, I don't know, you know, I really don't want to, like, touch my 3DS anymore. Uh, as, like, especially since literally no games are using stereotopic 3D. I didn't care about it that much, but that's that's the only reason to play a game on the 3DS other than the dual screens. Like, if a game was on Switch and 3DS, you're gonna buy it for your Switch if you have both. Um, so it would have been cool if, if Metroid was... Metroid, the remake of 2, was on um, the Switch. It would look it would look fantastic. 
because on, on 3DS it looks a little cheap. You know, it looks like a 3DS game, low res. Uh, so it'll be fantastic on Switch. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm done complaining, though. Like, I, I want to play this. I'm glad. I think it's still smart of them to support the Switch, or the 3DS. Because they don't know if the Switch is going to flop yet or not. It's doing fantastic. It's right. It's, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's explosive right out of the gate. But, you know, who knows, who knows how long they'll last. And they still, it'd be nice for them to have the 3DS to fall back on a little bit if the, if the Switch starts to, you know, flounder. Um... Uh, okay, um, and then I, I, I'll, I'll include this because it was it was important. Another smart move on their side. Uh, they announced a Pokemon game and and an a uh, um, uh, quote RPG, end, end quote, that they're developing for the Switch specifically. Um, I'm assuming when they say RPG, it means main series like Gen Eight. I think that was really smart. I I love the thought of them seeing the reaction to. The, to, to the last week's direct and being like, oh, fuck, like, god damn it, we can't do anything. Like, just trust us, please. Uh, and they just put it in there of the guy saying, oh, yeah, like, fuck you guys. You, you think that was all we had? Well, yeah, there's one cover to the Switch, so just kill yourself. Um, I think that's great. I think, oh, God. Oh, my fucking, oh. I think, that, I think it's awesome. I think it's awesome that they were we're willing to just like be like fuck it fine we won't have our huge reveal here you go it's covered just shut your mouth um that's great but again it it is like it is kind of a cheap shot it gave him like a basically a free high point in the direct the fact that like oh there's a new it got people hyped over what could just be nothing <laughs> they could be nothing developed they could just be like shit now we have to develop one and there's nothing on the table right now um but either way, that that that's I think it was smart. I think they're starting to understand their fan base a little more, which is great. Which might mean Mother Three. I personally don't care. I haven't. I tried Earthbound, and it's, as I said, I'm a big dummy. I can't even handle that like level of an RPG. Not really. I just get a little too bored. Um, so I don't care that much about Mother Three. But I, I I care about it specifically because of other people. If that happens for other people, that's awesome. I would love to see it and be like, fucking nice guys. Like great, good for you. That's that's a big deal. All right. Um. Next, the big one, the big old boy, the big fucking M, Mario Odyssey. Oh my god. Oh my fucking god. That trailer is so good. It's like milked joy. It's like Nintendo Nintendo whipped out its little teat and fed me joy, rainbow joy into my mouth and drank it all down filled with Mario protein. It's like Mario possessed me. That's what was happening. His hat was flying out of the screen and attaching himself to everybody who was watching. That trailer was so good. It got me... In, I, as, as, as most have said, uh, Monster Hunter, that's, that's what it reminded everybody immediately. When the T-Rex was... I was like, Turok? Like, just a Turok game or Monster Hunter? And I saw the Mario hat, and I still didn't expect, suspect anything. I was like, is this, is this like, fucking Mar- Turok with... Mario costumes? I don't know. And then the little eyes appeared, and I still wasn't convinced. I still thought it was a costume, and then Mario jumped out, and I was like, you have to be shitting me. Like, this is insane. And then, obviously, it was revealed that you can possess multiple things, and that's that's such a cool mechanic. Like, Nintendo is going so far out of its comfort zone with so many of this shit, and it's great. It's fantastic. I love seeing what they're doing. It's 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 such a cool, like, evolution to see the... the the Wii era of, of like, of just kind of almost no games, and the Wii U era with, like, safe games, but some, some, some were stretched, some were stretched out there, you know? We, we still have, you know, we still got our 2D Mario, which, you know, just are just done to fucking death now, um, but then this generation is just Breath of the Wild, this crazy open world fucking Zelda game, Mario just looks mind-melting, I, I cannot wait, and uh, August, tw- or October 27th, that's, that's crazy, like, I was expecting at least a month later, and that's that's awesome that in four months I'm going to get my hands on that fucking that Italian's slippery feet. It's going to be fantastic. Um, no, that game, that, that game, I can't even, I can't even speak. That game looks fantastic. The fact that it's going back to 64 and Sunshine, and it seems like it's still sprinkling a little, little bit of 3D Land, 3D World, Mario Galaxy 1 and 2 in there. You know, the polish of those games, it's, it's just keeping, keeping a little of that in there. And then just, like, this inventiveness that it's so, that's so just unique to this game like th- it's it's crazy like, the little tiki head with the sunglasses the uh, all this stuff it's i can't i can't do it next uh that's all those are all the those are all the press conferences those are all the, the games i i either gave a shit about or just stood out to me in general 
Now I thought I would um, go back and like grade all of them. Like basically my list in reverse. Uh, this is going to be between EA, Ubisoft, Bethesda, Nintendo, Microsoft, and Sony. Um, so bottom of the list, EA. Holy shit! What a what a what a snore! What a what a I don't give a crap! What what a, your biggest game was Battlefield fucking two? Why are you getting a second chance? Who knows? Um, and a way out, which is like a, essentially an indie game. But you know, cool. I guess good for you. D plus at like at best. You get you. I give you a D plus. I Ricky the King. You give you a D plus on your face. It was it was it was boring and it was it was fucking sports games. I knew if you were into sports games, awesome. You could you that's cool. Like I, I'm happy for you because you get fucking four hundred a year. You are you are set for your existence. Like my little cousin has an Xbox One with literally like four sports games a year and it makes me want to cry. Um, after that, that's a D plus. After that, Bethesda. You know, I I went in not expecting too much. I don't really necessarily care that much about their first party games um that first party meaning just developed by them uh but then like i love doom a lot i haven't played i haven't played prey i haven't played wolfenstein i haven't played the evil within i barely played skyrim i'm planning on getting it for my switch later this year so i wasn't expecting much and i went in and like i really liked the, the presentation itself i liked the the um uh the the bethesda line it seemed you know seemed a little jerky like a little, I'm gonna jerk myself off for 25 minutes, um, but other, but it still was cool. It was still a nice presentation, um, but but you know, Doom VR v, VF. I don't know what the hell that stands for. I don't remember that. You know, that's that was a huge letdown. I really wanted Doom 2. Doom Doom was such a good game last year, and Doom 2 would have been great. And then. Fallout VR. I played Fallout for a little bit. Really wasn't my kind of game. I'm I'm not that into to open world games that are like that. Like I need I need better open world games for me. Um, that 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 wasn't doing much for me. And then Skyrim for Switch. The Link, the Master Sword's cool, uh, but I don't really like the costume that much. It's it's a cool addition. I think I I'm glad they went that far. And then they showed the motion controls, and I was like, wow. I'm, I mean. I'm not probably not going to use it for, just for convenience sake, and I'll probably be playing it in portable mode most of the time. But that's that's really awesome. Glad you went that far. And then they showed Skyrim VR and for PSVR, and I, and I was like, okay, well, I thought you were giving you know Nintendo a little butt plug, but instead you were doing for both. This is the best of both worlds. I'm sure you did VR first, and then we're like, oh, switchy, switchy, switch. It's still cool. It's still an awesome gesture, but it's not as awesome. Um, and then Evil with Evil Within, right? Yeah. Two looks cool. Looks looks like a neato game, uh, but no. But I, I, don't, I don't care. But and then Wolfenstein, as I said earlier, seems like one of those single player games I like. So Ubisoft or Bethesda, you get a C minus. I'll, I'll grant you that one. You get a C minus. You were slightly below average in terms of just presentation and all around gaming content, I would say. Uh, and then Ubisoft, I, I thought. I thought it was a good conference, but I, I went, and then I, I watched it, and I was like, alright, I'm, I'm pretty satisfied with that, so it's okay, and then I went on Twitter, and it's like, Ubisoft, Ubisoft 1E3, like, they, they had the best conference, they hit it out of the park, and I was like, really? Like, they showed, at least for me, they showed two games for that interested me at all, and most people that were tweeting that were people that I knew specifically didn't care about the rest of the games they showed. What it was, was Beyond Good and Evil 2, just like... I get it. It's, it's a humongous game, but I don't think that really changes the rest of the conference that much. Um, I get it though. You know, people have been waiting that forever. I haven't played it, so I can't. I can't relate uh, really that much. Um, so you know, that, I think it's fair. I think it's fair for them to, to to hype it up that much. But I personally was was a, was wasn't let down necessarily. But I was just you know, compared to others, I was like, well, eh, whatever. It was it was it was cool. Maybe also compared to the previous years, which were just the fucking worst it seemed comparatively great but yeah it was comparatively great but and that but only to ubisoft's other conferences to the other conferences it was just okay uh so i give i, I bestow upon them a c plush and then sony uh weird that sony is at the bottom of the big three this year that is that is usually not the case i'm surprised last year they were great year before that they were great this year it's just just pretty good 
I would say they were pretty good. Um, they showed mostly games that had already been announced, but they showed a lot of really, really meaty IPs that really do a lot for them and that I know a lot of people are excited about. Um, I think, I think, um, I think that a lot of those IPs are going to do a lot for them. And like Uncharted, God of War, Days Gone, and a whole new IP, um, stuff like that. Like that's that's cool for them. Where's Knack Two though? Like, were you too in- like? I'm not even kidding. Were you too embarrassed to show Knack Two? Was that what it was? Because it wasn't. I know they live streamed it later, but they just didn't show it. They didn't show Knack Two. And okay, damn. Way to show your support, guys. Like fucking. Why why is that a thing in the first place? I don't get it. Nope. I have not heard of one person that liked Nag One. In fact, everybody talks shit about it. Um, that might just be because it's a meme. I haven't played it. It looked like a, a mediocre game. It looked great. I mean, it came, it launched with it. It looked great. Nag Two looks cool. I guess I'm not gonna play it again. I'm just not interested. Um, but yeah, there, there we go. <laughs> um, yeah. But all around, it was a pretty good press conference. They had a lot of good. Of cool games that I'm, I'm interested in um, Monster Hunter that was a huge reveal there um, that, that was a bit big and, and so was Shadow of the Colossus there's a lot of good stuff a lot of good stuff that I'm into but not not more good stuff than the other companies so I would give them a B I I would poop a plop a little good butt on them a little B just solid B and then followed by Nintendo I know I am the I, I love Nintendo's big veiny wiener but I I could not rate them among up uh, uh, above Microsoft this year, at least objectively, um, and I'll get to that. But Nintendo's was great. I I I went in expecting nothing, and I got just IP after IP, great game after great game, and I was just a super. I was just so like o like overly satisfied by the end of the show. I I, I was just. I was like, especially after that Mario Odyssey trailer, I was like, holy shit, like, what am I going to do with my life? I, I'm going to have to go, like, burn down a building to get all this energy out or something. And I did, I did, but, like, it still didn't help that much. Mario Odyssey is going to, like, destroy me internally. Um, but, yeah, I, I, I went away, I went in expecting, like, just basically an update. A 25-minute update, like, these games are going all right, here we go, and then nothing else, and... and and that, and that wasn't what it was. It was it was an update on a few games. It was like this is at, like Xenoblade Two is still coming this year. Fire Emblem is still coming this year. Um, Mario Odyssey is gonna make you cream your pants this year in October. Um, so you know, I gave it an A minus. Nintendo, you did a great job. Much better than the last two years. And last year you didn't even have one. You had Zelda all year, and that still was probably my favorite because Zelda just oh god. Um, but the year before that was just Star Fox and. Triforce Heroes and Federation Force and holy crap, people people were not happy with you guys. And number one, Microsoft. Microsoft, you you guys really did it. You you went out there, showed a console that I could not give less of a fuck about. The Xbox One X, Box One X, Box One X. I do not care. I don't care how many floppy flops it has or how many how many gehers it has. I just I. I don't know what any of that means. That those are all basically buzzwords at this point. Because I even the journalists in the crowd were just like, what? Like, I don't know what that means. Um, and like, I, cool. I didn't care. I I was thinking to myself, this is a literal paperweight without any games. And they were like, 42 games, 22 are exclusives. And I was like, you have got to be shitting me. That is insane. Like so many games were showed at that press conference. It was, like, usually press conferences are an hour and a half. This one, and this one was, but it had, like, almost no fluff. It was so many, like, it was constant games. It was, like, world premiere, and then it showed a game, and I was like, nice. And then it was, like, Xbox exclusive, and I was like, R already? Like, another game? And then it just kept going, and it kept going. And I was like, this is, you are, you are, like, it was so smart of them to do that, to just prove that their consoles were something. Um... It was a fantastic press conference. It's what is a is what a, a press conference should be, and it also kind of means that next year's is either next year's gonna suck ass. I mean, it's gonna be all of those games again, essentially, and maybe a few new surprises. Uh, but but yeah, like that. It was it was an A. I give it a solid A. I don't think anything would ever like get an A plus for me, other than like 
an hour and a half of straight Nintendo content that was like all awesome, that would get an A plus. But but Microsoft, you get an A. Like that that was a fantastic press conference. I, like I almost feel proud after seeing like how really just corporate and shitty Microsoft can be. I was like, wow, like this is great. They understand games are important. That's awesome. And that seemed to be the major theme of all of this E3. Every single developer came out like it, there was no like 30 minute segment like game playing a a random game like it was cool they they all came out and seemed like they cared about games they came out and were were like here's some games this is these are games a bunch of games it, it was cool it was and I, I hate to see people saying like oh EA 2000 or er, E3 2017 uh uh-huh, it's it's basically just trailers on stage and it's like that's that's cool. <laughs> that's great to me. And I think I think Sony did a great job of, of balancing that, where they had like snow falling from the top of the uh, top of the theater and like bodies falling down while still like they basically made the trailers more 3D and immersive. And that was that was a great balance because they made it a show. Because that's that is what they were. They were all just trailer showings. But like, I mean, who is really there to not see games? Who's there to see people play Wii fucking music? Like th- those are horrible for a reason um but yeah it was it was it was a good e3 i'm i'm really happy to go away from this e3 just really satisfied um ea sucked as usual bethesda didn't do that well um but you know what they they had confidence and that was cool this was a good e3 i gotta say um but that's all i can really say without without my big my big billy boy here my Billy Boy's not here and it's making me sad. So next time we make a video, it'll probably be me and Billy, but I might, I don't know, I might make like a, a, the most disappointments of E3. Or, or games that I just didn't mention, like Sonic Forces and uh, and the other one with Mania. And uh, that was it, huh? That's also all I really meant to mention. No, I'll mention it right now. They're cool. That's it. They look neat. Um, it disappoints me that the Switch version of... of uh, uh, forces is 30 frames and not 60 frames, but, you know, it's still, they both still look like cool games, I'm glad they're both still coming out this year. This game is, or this year is freaking packed. I, I, this is one of the best game, years in gaming, like, ever. Um, but that's it. That's it. I mean, fucking, I don't know. I, we don't have an end slate, so it's hard to end something. Uh, um, 